questions. Um, do I have a seconder for that motion? Jimmy, is there any discussion? I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, that's carried. Now the next items um, are items that I'm conflicted on. So we've got item 14, draft statements of in intent for CCHL, and item 16, draft statements of intent for Christchurch NZ, and in fact a part of um, item 13 because it involves the Rod Donald Trust. So we need to um, nominate a chair for that part of the meeting, given that I can't chair it and that Sam McDonald, the deputy chair, is not here. Um, so, Mike, you're happy to move that we... Uh, um, that we appoint Councillor Tim Scandrus. So moved by Mike, seconded by Melanie. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, aye. that's carried. So Tim, um, I will move out of the way so that you can do those next three items. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just start us off with the CCHL. Um, can we bring your team up? To, that'd be great. So we've got with us from CCHL, uh, Jeremy Smith, uh, the chair, uh, Tim Boyd, CEO, and Tony Rowell, the CFO. Um, so just before I hand over to the team, I just want to take through a, a couple of key points uh, I'd like to highlight. So today's report follows a detailed workshop with elected members on the 22nd of March with the CCHL team. The purpose of today's report is to receive the draft statement of intent and provide any further comments that elected members would like to provide CCHL and our formal feedback. Whilst we will take the paper as read, uh, key, note, key notes, things to note following the workshop include Financial forecasts continue to be updated due to the ongoing impact of COVID. And so final dividend forecasts cannot be finalised until the business planning has been finalised. CCHL committed to work with council staff on the dividend forecast. In our letter of expectations, we requested CCHL undertake a strategic review of CCHL's re role to reflect whether after 30 years its original purpose, core purpose remains relevant and fit for purpose for the next 30 years. Work is currently being done between CCHL and council staff to agree a terms of reference for the review with a workshop scheduled in May to, uh, to discuss the terms of reference and to report the outcomes of the CCHL's independent board effectiveness review. The strategic review will commence following this workshop with the outcome of the review and any recommendations coming from it to the new council in November for approval. This will help inform any appointment processes to the CCHL board following council elections. And on that note, I will pass over to the CCHL team to provide any comments. All yours. And welcome, Thanks. Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Leah. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And of course, uh, adding to that, you finally get to see Tim in person, <laughs> uh, uh, such as COVID. Uh, look, uh, the introduction to the SOI is all being made by Leah, and, and Tim and Tony will speak to that in a moment. Just one moment, if I could take to acknowledge, obviously, the uh, very tragic incident that occurred at the port this week. Uh, part of the group, the group is uh, does very much feel like a, an extended family. Um, uh, no one likes to go through these, but it's been felt uh, very strongly uh, amongst the group. And I know you've been updated on uh, process uh, that is occurring. But I really did want to acknowledge that and, and of course, uh, in this public forum, pass on uh, on behalf of the CCHL board and team uh, uh, our, our thoughts and wishes to everyone involved and particularly the family. So with that, uh, I will hand over to uh, Tim and Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, so Tim Boyd, everybody, and, and a pleasure to meet you all finally in person um, as the new chief executive of CCHL. This is my uh, first time through the um, process of uh, looking to arrive at uh, SOIs. It's certainly been uh, quite an enlightening uh, process for me, uh, being new to the role, and it's certainly been very helpful, and I'd like to thank uh, the councillors uh, for their time, certainly through the workshops as we look to finalise uh, SOIs through this process. Tony's going to speak to um, uh, the draft SOI as it stands, and uh, a little bit about the process and, and history of, of where we've uh, arrived at. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. 
Uh, so the draft SOIs were previously presented in detail at a council workshop in March. Um, so I will take the report um, largely as read and just note uh, some key highlights. Uh, the numbers provided in the draft SOIs are subject to change uh, due to economic factors such as inflation and interest rate volatility that continue to put pressure on the group, along with the uncertainty of COVID and um, timing of dividends. Um, final forecasts from the business planning cycle will be reflected in the final SOIs, which will be provided to Council on 30th of June. Uh, the draft SOI forecast um, group profits in FY23 uh, that are lower than what was forecast in last year's SOI. The key reason for this is that the airport's recovery from COVID is delayed as a result of ongoing restrictions that have only recently been lifted. Um, it's expected that it will take time for travel to return to pre-COVID levels. Um, given the perceived cautiousness of travellers and the affordability of travel on households due to the impact of high inflation and interest rates, etc. Consequently, uh, dividends from subsidiaries to CCHL are lower in FY23 than those included in last year's uh, CCHL SOI. However, for the purposes of CCHL's draft SOI, uh, CCHL has maintained FY23 dividend levels to Council, consistent with the prior year SOI. Um, CCHL's statement of intent um, sorry, also includes key requests from Council's letter of expectation, such as maximising dividends, managing debt, board and strategic reviews, diversity, climate change and living wage. The key requests from CCHL's letter of expectation to its subsidiaries are largely outlined in the subsidiary statement of intent, such as climate change, organisational collaboration, community engagement, diversity inclusion, living wage and relationship with mana whenua. Most of these requests are included from the previous um, SOIs, however there are some new items um, that have been included this year. Um, some of the requirements have not been included in the subs um, SOIs, but this is simply an oversight and will be rectified in the final statements of intent. Uh, also, further work is required around greenhouse gas emissions footprints and the independent verification thereof, um, strategic review terms of reference and mana whenua targets. These items will be addressed in full in the final statement of intent. Um, that concludes my overview and now asking councillors to note the report and open up for any questions. Questions, councillors? Yanni. Um, I, I guess it's just, and thank you, I, I know you've kind of provided an, an answer on the email, um, just around, um, sorry, it was just in, in, in relation to um, the CEO remuneration, obviously council, we've requested on a number of occasions for restraint to be to be shown. Um, mm -hmm. And that answer around the total pool you've highlighted since 2017, there's been an increase of 17% or 4.2% or per annum. But then also you've, you've gone on to say this is not a fair representation of the increases. Total REM includes long-term incentives, termination benefits, holiday pay entitlements. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to get a sense of like how that restraint is being shown and how we can actually look and measure it because um, it's really hard to see from the reports that that, that we get, like w what's happening. Um, yeah. So, you know, I don't know if you can talk to any trends or how that the request that we've put forward has been reflected. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's... Really, what is, okay. I know we've asked for the, the reporting of the bottom 10 and the top yeah, 10 percent. That's right. And that's, I'm just not sure when we're likely to see that either. That's right. So the um, you have requested for the top 10 and bottom 10 percent of uh, remuneration to be reported, and that will be first reported in the annual reports, um, which will be available uh, by the end of September for all of the um, entities in the group. Um, in terms of um, understanding the remuneration levels um, we obviously have you know given you some information that was publicly available out of the annual reports from FY21 and um, showing the the increase that's happened over time um, but 
what I was trying to say there was that the FY21 number includes um, uh, those additional incentives that are paid when an incumbent CEO leaves a role, which is what happened in FY21. Uh, so it's somewhat inflated in terms of um, that overall total that I provided to you earlier. Um, and we can certainly do some more work around um, looking at uh, specific amounts that exclude those anomalies, those right. one-offs. I mean, w one thing that struck me with the COVID was just the, the varied response from each of the companies around um, the reduction in CEO pay. It was quite a contrast between um, what, what happened. And I, I know that's, I guess, up to the individual em em employees to decide what, what they do. Um, but in terms of CCHL, how are you benchmarking what's fair, reasonable um, executive remuneration compared to what's happening in the marketplace yes. and also in the public sector and the impact of COVID? So the boards, uh, when they make appointments, they all are very aware of the need to show restraint. Uh, that's very clear. We have those discussions, but they also have to balance that against attracting, firstly, and then actually retaining talent. Uh, there is no question that uh, we do attract some very, very capable executives, and that's known, and uh, they are then uh, no doubt in demand by other companies. So it is a balancing uh, on the way through. Many of the companies would be uh, uh, looking to externally based objective data. But some of the anomalies that Tony has talked about will always occur when you've got a, a, a group as broad as ours. There'll be new people leaving, uh, sorry, people leaving, new people coming in. And, and the only that does make it difficult to give you a really straight uh, number. But the figures that Tony has given you there, um, it's not just a matter of they've gone up. What, what we haven't said is, well, what would similar um, uh, positions have gone up by in that time frame? And we know there's, we do know there's real pressure on on uh, senior salaries. Thank you. Yeah. Is, that, is that it, Annie? Yeah, I just had two more questions. Um, one was in regards to the living the living wage, and, and sorry that. Um, 189, the report's quite quite good, um, the, the big sort of spreadsheet, but it's just quite hard when you read through the report to figure out what's being done in the yep. draft statement of intent versus the table that was the key area of focus in the LOE to the subsidiaries. But I guess, um, so just, and thank you for, I, I mean, I did put this question in around CIAL and the the living wage, um, and you, you've said that the airport has made a commitment to paying the living wage in their draft SOI, and then in relation to contractors, um, they're outsourcing its cleaning services under the current contract agreement. It's been agreed underlying rates will increase in line with living wage over the next three years. Right. So I'm just trying to understand, like, given that the first person, as I'm aware, that raised the living wage with council was a cleaner from the airport over... over um, nearly 10 years ago, when, when will the cleaners at the airport get a living wage? Uh, so this has been put in place now, that's what I was talking about. Right. That contract reflects um, the next three years, which is the term of the contract, and that they have agreed that that will match the living wage. So is that in three years' time they'll get the living wage, or N no, is the existing no, contract being modified? No, no, it's over the next three years that it will always meet the living wage. It's so in that's place from, now. So that's from now, that's in place now, is yep. it? Yep. So currently the cleaners at the airport are getting the living wage. That's my understanding. Okay. Yep. Cool. That's good to know. Um, and the final question from me, which I don't think will come as any surprise, is um, uh, is Terrace Airport um, and the CIA um, the statement of intent. Oh, I guess I was just quite concerned when I read through that to... Um, kind of, kind of see that um, the airport was um, like like the section in our agenda um, talk, talks about um, that it fits the New Zealand's low carbon future, 
Um, and I guess I'm just really struggling with understanding um, at a higher level the, the way it's sort of been sold to us. And I guess I was just interested in what feedback CCHL or what considerations CCHL have had around recognising the environmental impact of the proposed development and the financial cost to us as a city, but also, I guess, as, as the planet rather than like the airport, because I know the airport doesn't have to account for airlines emissions, which seems to be the kind of big gap in, in, in it. But how I, I'm just struggling to, to know how that could be um, mentioned as being um, fitting our low carbon future when you think about the emissions that a new airport would, would create. Yeah, Annie, we've got, as I requested at the workshop, we have a briefing coming again from uh, the CIA te L team uh, in the end of May, I think it is. And, um, so all of those questions that you can we can work through. Also noting, too, that it's very early in the process, is where they are, so a lot of those questions can't actually necessarily be answered yet. But on that point, it would be nice to highlight the fact that our international airport has just been awarded uh, the first... I've got this right, mm -hmm. the first, first airport in the world that is positive carbon. Climate positive yes. airport. Climate positive. Yep, first one in the world, that's correct. And they've also just been awarded a platinum award within their size category at the Airport Council International Asia Pacific Green Airport Awards. Yep. And that's for their um, project um, around innovations and aquifers. Right, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and that's great. But when I look at the Expand Our Horizons section, for Centro Otago, it says the reality is current airport infrastructure won't meet our community's future connectivity needs. This means we must urgently transition New Zealand's aviation network to a low carbon future. And that's to explore a new greenfield option. So, And then it goes on to say Richard fitting existing infrastructure can be expensive and will only provide short term solution, doesn't address mitigation or depth. So, Yanni, I think. Changes. It's been pointed out that CIL would be the better ones to answer that directly, and they're coming to us, I believe, in May for a briefing. Nice. Well, yep. well, can I be more direct then? Has CCHL raised any concern with CIAL um, around the environmental impact of the proposed terrace airport and the economic and the potential cost of going down this exercise? Yep. And, and if so, and, what, and what was we, that? We we have, and uh, to date. Uh, the responses are that it's very early on in the process. They're highly aware of the sensitivity of the issue and it will be considered through every step of planning over perhaps the next 10 or 15 years before this becomes an airport. That's right. And they have also, can I just say, they have also provided um, an extensive, uh, extensive detail on the website to address environmental concerns around tariffs. Yeah. Um, it's all been publicly available uh, from the airport. And are you able to advise how much money the proposed terrace airport development is, is, co is how much is money's on budget for that planning? And too early in the in the process to tell. So, so but they must have a budget for all the work that needs to happen. I, I, th I think that it would be better to be answered in May by them directly. I think mm. we don't have that information yeah. available. Yeah, I guess I was just concerned with the COVID-19 impact on the airport's finances, that spending money on this development now is not maybe not the best use of funds. Well, they're not going to spend it tomorrow, but I think, I, I personally, I think it would be better to okay. be get put in front of them in May when they come to us. And uh, uh, who would be the best? If, if councillors have questions for CIL and for their presentation in May, who would be best to... Send it through to the OCE and we will make sure that any questions that you have that we'll pass them on to CIA uh, through CCHL yep. before the briefing. But yep. note, the statement of intent is for the next three years. Mm. There's no... Uh, unless uh, something's changed, I don't think there's anything going to be built in the next three years. So there'll be no. nothing on this budget. The, the valid questions for that, but, that, but like, we need to ask it to CIA directly. So send through his questions and we'll pass them on. Are there any further questions from uh, Celeste? I guess I'm just um, following up on Yanni's point because obviously we're in sort of a feasibility stage around a lot of the planning stuff, but we're also in a time where we actually have to make hard choices now. So we could say, well, we're just looking into it and we're just getting the information and we're sort of, we won't be doing anything for 10 years, but actually we need to be taking action now to pre prevent things that will hit us, well, are, are happening now. So I just want to make sure that as part of our sort of strategy, we are looking at addressing the, the reality as it is right now. So whether we 
can make a business case for tariffs um, is, a, is a significant question given if it's based on the idea of um, reliance on international tourism, is that a good strategy? Is that a responsible strategy for, for us bit. as stakeholders in that? So my question would be, uh, are we kind of taking into account those kind of broader questions across, and it would include questions around the port as well, like we might be meeting some of the sort of low level strategic priorities in terms of sustainability, but how does that fit in with our overall kind of emissions reduction plan as a city? So I guess there seems to be a bit of a tension there between what, what we say we're, we're working towards and actually the things that we seem to be putting on the table and just a bit confused around how we'll be delivering on some of our climate change goals. And I, I don't think you can answer that my question now. It's, I guess I'm just looking for a bit of clarification around how this stuff will be delivering for us in practice. Well, yep. thank you. Look, I think you've really hit the nail on the head when you said there's a tension in this because there absolutely is, is a tension. And when all of our companies, ourselves as CCHL, uh, and obviously as our ultimate shareholder, uh, have this uh, um, challenge on the table around climate change and sustainability. Uh, we discuss it around our board table clearly. Uh, there's a really easy solution, just to stop doing things, but that's very economically um, uh, damaging. It's, it's in terms of uh, the portfolio. Uh, there are other ways of saying, well, what strategies are available and what is the future going to look like, which is partly why it's hard to give crystal clear answers to the likes of Yanni's question because things are going to evolve quite rapidly but where do the companies want to be positioned if they're going to take advantage of that and then of course in the airports situation ultimately you've got well, where are you going to allocate capital and where is that capital going to come from that's that's the big question so I, I think if you if you're feeling there's some uh, tension or confusion that is the sort of the model that that the corporate environment is operating in now and trying to balance those things and yet not put everything off until you can see what happens because that's, that's going to take a long time and yet not stop doing things either. And so these challenges sort of emerge on an ongoing basis. So they're, they're very real conversations. Can't give you immediate answers. I think, you know, I, I have heard from the airport what their strategy is and, and why they uh, believe that what they are looking at ultimately will turn out to be uh, a better outcome from the environment than sitting still. But that needs to be challenged and that also needs to, uh, to be brought forward here. So I understand it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions? I'm happy to move this from the chair. Thank you, Pauline. All those in favour say aye. Uh, oh, Yanni, yes. Just trying to follow. So we're just doing the um, the CCHL one. Yeah. I, can, look, can I can I just say I just want to acknowledge the work that's gone on with the with the living wage. And I mean, you know, it's obviously been slower than some of us would have liked. But I do think in the past um, twelve months and maybe twenty four months that CCHL has worked with our companies to. Um, really put the pressure on to bring in the living wage, both to direct employees and the contractors. And so I just wanted to um, acknowledge that. And overall, I think the statement, the draft statement of intents um, are good. They give us a lot of detail. But I guess I'm just concerned that um, uh, two, two main issues, really. One is that I, I still feel like as a council that we're not involved in the strategic direction of our companies as much as we should be. Um, and I think the terrace airport is a really good example of that whereas I wish we could actually just make a call as a council um, if that's something that we agree with or not and then it gives the certainty and the clarity to our companies to go either go on and do it or not spend a whole bunch of money time resource which is precious into a project that we might not be comfortable with but to date we've had no ability as, a, as an organisation to make a call on that one way or another so um, I'm, I'm not going to support the draft statements of intent um, for CCHL and the subsidiaries today. Um, I do think we need to be far more directive as a council. These are 
companies that belong to the city. Um, and I think we have to we have to play a, a strategic role in getting the best outcome for, for our city by providing um, clear direction. So, um, but I appreciate the work that's gone in. I look forward to hearing from the airport um, around what what their plans are. Um, but I, I personally just feel that the tariffs proposal is not something that we should be pursuing um, with the pressure on our budgets and the environmental impact and with climate change and the issue of sustainability. Um, I think it's um, it's something that, that should just be put, put on the back burner for now. So um, I know I'll probably be in the minority, which is why I haven't um, signalled an amendment. I, I don't think I'd possibly not get the support for it, but um, I just wanted to put my position on the table and, and note that's why I won't be supporting this, the, the statements of intent. Um, and also just to, to reflect um, that I also just want to acknowledge though that we are doing these in public and I just want to acknowledge the transparency of having um, CCHL here today and for the council staff just to say thank you for putting this in a public process. I, I also just wanted to um, highlight that. Thank you. Anyone else want to? Mike. Thank you. I wasn't going to talk to that because I actually agree with a lot of what um, Yanni has has said and share some of the concerns that he does um, has um, put put forward, especially around tariffs. Um, but I, I think this is a statement of intent, and the time to do that should be in our letter of expectation. Um, and I think we often say all the time is we need to be much stronger at that time, um, but because they can only respond to what we the direction that we give them. So I, I think. Um, look, I'll, I'll support this at the moment. I w I'm looking, I want to see what comes forward from this draft because this is just feedback that at this point of time. Um, it does concern me, but I, I think when we get to our letters of expectation, we still need to be stronger um, and give much clearer guidance and direction of what we expect to see from our, our companies. And obviously they are at arm's length. Um, the companies are two, at two arm's length with CCHL in, there, in the middle, but I, I I've always thought that we're not strong enough, um, and that's where we need to improve. Um, so hopefully, um, if if Yanni is really concerned that when this comes back around it for next year for the expectation, we actually have a much stronger viewpoint at that time. Thank you, Mike. Any further comment, and debate? So, um, it's been. I've I've moved it. Um, Pauline seconded it. Um, all those in favour? Aye. All those against? Abstentions. It's passed. Thank you very much, Jeremy, Tim and Tony. Thank you.